Hey everybody, this is Boysen Hodgson, Mankind Project USA Communications and Marketing. And I am uh, excited, happy, grateful to be sitting with Bill Wick today. And Bill, for those uh, guys and uh, women out there who don't know who you are, let's start first with, so give us a little bit of background. Who are you, Bill? <laughs> well, in the context of MKP, uh, I went I went through in May of '91 and uh, in San Diego, and I it, it was you know somehow it became my I decided this was going to be my vehicle of service, and so I got very involved um, when I'm you know at that time what Leader Track was called and um, basically became co leader in '93, uh, full leader in '95, and and then I became leader body chair in 96, and then I was curriculum chair in 97. Um, and I was that for about three years, and then basically got involved in a lot of prison trainings, Folsom, um, the Inside Circle, and then later Boston and Wisconsin in addition to that. And oh, that's wow. where I've been putting most of my energies uh, lately. Um, and back when I was curriculum chair, I was very interested in creating um, a vertical dimension to MKP. Uh, most guys were concerned with the horizontal dimension, which is uh, more centers, more trainings, you know, more NWTAs. And my vision is, was always in the vertical dimension. What do we do? Where do we take the men after the initial training, the initiation? How do we train them? What's important uh, to share with them and to create a vertical dimension? And so that's that's where most of my focus went as far as you know MKP curriculum. Cool. Well, that gives us uh, that gives us several directions to go. But you, so you've got deep roots. Uh, in MKP, it was my life for about ten to fifteen years. Yes. <laughs> and the, and then in the prison work, I just see um, so much happening. I, I, I mean, I do. Are you following the work, the documentary? Yeah, I've actually seen it, and I'm so thrilled. I'm so excited. I can't get over it. Uh, real excited. And I'm real excited not only for the prison work, but for MKP. Uh, yeah. they're gonna, that movie is going to share the essence of what MKP is all about and let people see and experience it um, almost firsthand. It's, it's incredible, the experience of it. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. You have a big leg up on me because I have not seen it yet. But uh, for those of you who are listening who don't know, so the work is a documentary film, uh, Cinema Veritas, right? Truth, truth, truth in cinema. Um, inside Folsom with uh, some names that you would definitely recognize in MKP and in prison work. Um, and it is covering, uh, it covers one of the intensives, right? Covers a three-day Folsom intensive? Yeah, at, at that time, there were four-day intensives, and it covers one of those from the beginning to the end. They had, they had 200 hours of film that they had to cut down to 88 minutes. Which, uh, yeah. And uh, I got goosebumps. And uh, so what's happened with that is this documentary just was released and uh, aired, uh, premiered at South by Southwest, and won the grand jury prize yeah. for documentary at yeah. South by Southwest, which is an incredible accomplishment. Yes. And wow. So yes, thank you for all of the work that you have done there and with the Truth Project and uh, with in Inside Circle and with, wow, thank you. Yeah. Oh, um, it's been a gift that I'll, I, I treasure. It's a gift that I, yeah, there's not, not enough words to say what that experience has been for me. And I'm just thrilled that I can share a little bit of it with, you know, by having people see the film. Um, mm -hmm. More, yeah, more on that. We will have more on that. So, and we're here to talk about something uh, totally different. It was at least, I would say three years ago, you and I got on a phone call and you walked me through your catalog you shared with me some documents, a catalog of trainings that you have worked on and been doing and things that you have created. And right now, um, one of your 
uh, creations, one of your curriculum called The Next Step is, uh, is in provisional approval with the Mankind Project USA through our curriculum. Uh -huh. So I wanna hear about what is the next step training? How did you come up with it? When in, and this speaks to that vertical that you were talking about. Right, right. Um, in, well, I was at a San Diego uh, center meeting, uh, probably 1992, maybe, maybe early 93. And um, we, we read a letter from Alan Gilbert, who's a, a leader in Mankind Project, and it, was, and it was about mission. Do you know Alan? I, my first I group, the Special Boys of New England. Really? Okay. Yes. Well, well, he probably doesn't even know this, but we, he wrote a letter, and it was to General MKP, about mission in your life and how um, we weren't doing enough to incorporate mission into men's lives after the training that you know, it was more of some kind of esoteric exercise that we weren't implementing in the real world. And, uh, and we were discussing it at the center and they, and they says, let's do a training to do just what Alan was asking for, which is incorporate mission into men's daily lives. And I volunteered to take the lead on it. Um, and so it started out in December of 93 was our first training and it was called the mission training. And it was, uh, focused on mission, uh, and it incorporated some of the tools I had learned uh, through my hypnotherapy training and also from different workshops I had taken that I thought were real powerful. And so I wanted to share those with other men, and so this was my chance to do that, and we did that uh, in this mission training. Uh, and that ran up until, I think it was around 97, no, 98 or so, it actually got approved as the second training for MKP. Um, and I believe it was at the national meeting in Philadelphia, and I think in 98. Hmm. And so, uh, and that was after we had done one in DC where a lot of the board members um, attended, so they could you know, experience it in that. Um, so it got approved, and then basically a, a number of things happened where that was never implemented. Um, and so, uh, it went on hiatus for a couple of years and then we started it back up again as the next step training. And we uh, made it co-ed and uh, we, went, we went another five or six years. And then Les Sinclair, who was administrating it, um, basically he needed to, to step down from administration and we never did pick up that load. I mean, Les was a huge gift in mm. uh, developing this training and uh, bringing it out to the world administrating it. And so um, it basically went on hi another hiatus for about 10 years. And then basically because of Jonathan King, we started it up again uh, about two, three years ago. And um, we've had four of them now and they're, it's, it's all coming back together and, and it's been real exciting. So, What, what a legacy, what a beautiful legacy. Um, yeah, and Alan Gilberg, who is now uh, lives in Holyoke, about 20 minutes away from me, and turns wood, makes beautiful things, and works with young Latino uh, boys, works with uh, Latino boys in Holyoke on, you know, on Alan, on what Alan does. Yeah, yeah. Grounding and centering and living and, yeah, and emotional intelligence. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he just turned, I think he just had his 80th birthday party not very long ago. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. give him my best. I, have, I haven't talked to Alan for a long time, and I miss him. Mm, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. So next step. So now, um, here, here I am knocking at the door. What is the next step training about? Uh, what it is, it, is it was meant to be a um, introduction, a, a number of things. It's a, it's, it's, um, one of the priorities is a facilitator, take a facilitator training um, to teach men basic skills and actually some intermediate skills that they can take to their I group and help take the I group to the next level and help men resolve issues that they haven't been able to resolve using the tools that we generally use, you know, in the first few years of MKP. Um, so it's a, we teach basic skills uh, and 
the basic, the skills are part of a, uh, I would say an incremental um, approach where they build on each other. It's like uh, if it, we were teaching mathematics, we teach addition first and then multiplication and then division and on and on. And it's set up to do that, um, to teach certain skills that we can um, even develop later on in other trainings, even uh, more so to the mastery level. Um, so it's a facilitator training um, and it's set up where in the practice of these skills, we work with each other and each person gets to work with either another participants or a staff member a number of times to take these steps, these steps deeper and deeper into their um, inner world, into their transformation. And so it's a very much a healing and transformational experience uh, throughout, the, throughout the training. It just keeps building. Um, so facilitator training, a healing and transformation training. Um, there, it also adds context for what we do in MKP, um, mm -hmm. some cognitive context. We had a cognitive element that we don't have in, normally in MKP uh, trainings. Um, and many men find that real helpful. Uh, it's been real meaningful for me. Um, and then um, there's my favorite part of it is this inner world where you get to go inside and not only, you know, like see a power animal or whatever, but to actually go to create a base in your inner world where you can go to and work with parts of yourself and um, other energies to basically start your growth and transformation from the inside out. And by going to the inside with a real powerful tool, the changes that we make are permanent. They're, we make uh, the changes inside. It's like rewiring, you know, your software. It um, becomes real powerful, and it's something that you walk out with, and it's it's a difference. It's a difference in men and women's lives, um, and that's real exciting. And how does that? Uh, I'm intrigued by that, especially like, oh my gosh, it never occurred to me that having a base camp set up in that place, in that internal mytho place uh -huh. might make a difference. And how does that, I can kind of imagine, but how does that connect to mission? So how does this emerge into mission? Oh, that's a great question. So um, if I was gonna add the cognitive piece that we teach, it, it's kind of based on the idea that when you want to work on something, you basically take the parts and you differentiate them, you separate them out, and then you work on the parts individually and then bring them back together again and integrate them. So when somebody's working on fixing an engine, you don't fix an engine. You take the engine apart, you fix the carburetor, you, you fix a seal here and you fix the spark plug or something over here, and then you bring it all back together again as in its role as an engine. So what we do in the next step is we take a parts perspective. We take our parts and we separate them out. We identify and we get to uh, relate to a number of parts of ourselves. Maybe that we've never been aware of, maybe that we've never um, gotten to uh, interact with in any way. So we, we take up these parts, we work on some of the parts to help them uh, resolve you know, whatever struggles they're in. And then we bring them all back together again, all the parts, and we integrate them under the umbrella of a mission where they all have, where, where the parts may have individual identities, we bring them together into one identity, which is to be of service to the mission. And, and that's a real powerful force then to have all these parts working in support of my mission rather than against each other in some cases where they may have different purposes and, and never had the chance to relate that to something bigger than themselves. That's, that's awesome. Um, is there connected to that cognitive piece? Is there, are there recommended readings? Are there things that you, are there kind of frameworks that you explore further? There's um, a couple of, two of the cognitive pieces that we do talk about are basically filters to see the world with. Um, two of my favorites, and we touch on them in the training, is the Myers-Briggs personality types. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a number of reasons I like that, but one of them is, is simply the introvert-extrovert. I've seen men 
um, you know, in the prison work and in MKP who are introverts and they think it's a shadow or something wrong with them rather than celebrating that they're an introvert and that introversion has its own gifts. So those kind of, with the Myers-Briggs filter, some things that some men might consider shadows are actually gifts. And I like reframing those into a different way of looking at, you know, who I am. So I like Myers-Briggs and we use it in a number of ways. Cool. And then the other one is stages of consciousness. Um, anybody who's read Ken Wilber or Spiral Dynamics is familiar with spiral um, stages of consciousness. And that's another filter I find is really helpful as far as identifying something that might be considered a shadow when what it really is is a transition from one stage to another. And so by men having that context, it changes where the work goes. Um, and as much for, you know, self um, doubt and self judgment, it goes to celebration of where I am in my state, you know, my journey. Um, so those are two of the examples we use. Excellent. Great. That helped that helps contextualize for me a lot. And yeah, if you're in a guy new to, to the Mankind Project or new to personal development work, new to personal growth work, those are two incredible frameworks. And, and yeah, and just to say, holy mackerel, 20 years later, um, now the Mankind Project USA, like integral, integral is one of the primary touchstones that we rely on for everything now, uh -huh. Uh -huh. institutionally. Like that's, I mean, that's, we're constantly asking those questions. Yeah. That's so cool. And, uh, and Alan Gilberg was the first guy who did my Myers-Briggs typing on me <laughs> way back in the day. That would have been about 2005 was the first time that Alan and I sat down and talked to Myers-Briggs. So that's awesome. Wow. And do you know what your type is? INFP. INFP. That's the, what's real interesting is I found that, um, like Rich Tosi's INFP, the founder of MKP, you know, and, and then the founders of both Boston and Wisconsin prison programs were both INFP, are all INFPs. There's something about INFP and this work that, that goes together. And it's, um, it's very unique in our culture. You don't see too many INFPs taking these powerful leadership uh, positions. Yeah, it's an, and I think that I've relied on it for, um, I think the the gift gifts of facilitation come come a lot out of that a lot out of that for me. Yes. So yeah, the, yes. The one, the one thing I, I like about Myers Briggs and it's how it's one one use of it with MKP. I found that when we do the Myers Briggs at these next step trainings and other advanced trainings I've done in MKP, eighty percent of the attendees are NF. Mm. So. 80% are NFs in MKP trainings, advanced trainings, and it's only 10% of the population. So what that tells me is we, if we want to know who does MKP attract, we attract NFs. Mm. Those are the kind of guys that, that are attracted and stay with it because somehow we're resonating with what they, who they are and what they, they're looking for. So. Wow, cool. Thank you. Um, I am also intrigued by, this is a co-gender training. Yes. Tell me how that shows up. Tell me how that works. Uh, so uh, a lot of it started out with the men that were doing the training, staffing it, um, wanted to involve their spouses, um, their wives and girlfriends and that. And um, so there was a real... Uh, passionate want to share this with women also. And so we started, and a lot of these women had done Women Within um, or, you know, after many years, the Her Weekend. The Her Weekend. Um, and they needed somewhere to go to, somewhere to develop their skills in that. And so to me, the first most wonderful part about it is couples get to come and, you know, be together in their work. They can do their work individually or together. Um, but, you know, they start to develop being common language and common experiences that they can take home with them. And so that's real exciting for me. Um, uh, and then the other thing is we, with the next step, we don't deal with a lot of surface kind of issues, gender issues and things. We tend to work into like a couple levels below the surface. And in that place, 
there is no, there are no big differences between men and women. We're all doing the same work. We all have the same issues. And so that commonality at that place um, is real supportive of couples and also um, just uh, under being with enough, you know, the opposite gender in a way that, that feeds both, you know, both people. So that's been real, real, real powerful. That's awesome. And what do you, th um, so knowing where we are in the process, what's your hope for what is going to happen with the next step now? What's your vision for? Uh, my, my ultimate vision is, um, I mean, I, I'm thrilled that MKP, again, is recognizing as potential to be part of the curriculum. Um, and I want to thank David Carr and Jonathan King for, you know, helping with that. That's been um, wonderful. Um, so, I mean, I would love it. Uh, I'm, I'm getting on in years now, and I would love to be able to pass on what, you know, I'm able to share in this training. So um, if it can be part of MKP, um, and I know that it can be seated in this powerful organization, then I, I feel like, you know, something can carry on. And, and that's real important to me. I mean, at, at my stage of life, legacy is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And and so this is, um, personally, I want it to be part of my legacy to, you know, the men of the future in that. And um, so that's, that's real important to me. Um, and for MKP also, I think the tools that are taught, um, help move us past some of the, you know, some of the concerns I've heard men express, like the idea of woundology and all, you know, many other things that men have some reservations or concerns about with MKP. And I think it helps move past all that. And I'm, and I'm um, excited about that. Cool. Awesome. And I, and uh, just as a, as a plug for, for how well-trained Jonathan King is, when when we had our phone call to set up this get this interview set up uh the first question he asked was so when we do the next step training again down here are you going to come out to california to do it <laughs> may 19th you're more than invited <laughs> and uh and i said and and we ended up uh, we ended up at a place where i said well if you get to boston we need to get you to Boston so that we can attract uh, attract some Northeast men yes. um, and do a next step training in the Northeast. So this has been uh, very informative. So the next step training started with Bill Wick, started with some powerful guys way back when, has done two hiatuses, has utilized gifts and skills from some of the most powerful founders of, of MKP out there. Mm -hmm and has, has brought those men together. It is a co-gendered training. Uh, it gives you an introduction to Myers-Briggs typing and also to uh, spiral dynamics if you don't have those grasps. And it integrates on the vertical. So we are helping to deepen our level of skills and get a home base from which you can live your mission in the world. From an, like having a... Uh, I group inside of you, an I group of all your parts. Yes, yes. Awesome. I look forward to taking it. I would love to see you there. Love to. So, and I do want to bring it to Boston. I've had a lot of friends in, in uh, Boston from the prison training there, Jericho Circle, and yeah. I would love to bring it to Boston. So, yes, that would be cool. Wow. So you. Uh, I love how things connect. I love how things connect. So Truth, the Truth Project Wisconsin, uh, Ron Herring Mission of Service Award winners. Jericho Circle, Ron Herring Mission of Service Award winners. Uh, Inside Circle, Ron Herring Mission of Service Award winners. Full, like, yeah. there we are. Yeah. There's the work in the world. Yeah, and, and to see how the MKP work has have all these offshoots into really powerful, more specific applications um, is, uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of seeing that like boys to men in, in a number of different ways. And it's thrilling to know that uh, MKP is having that kind of effect on the world. Um, it's huge. And uh, in no small part to your efforts. Thank you. Thank you.